Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video, I'm going to be tidying up this Kenner Fast Ones BMW. And I'm going to be showing you how I make some replacement decals for it. These were produced by Kenner around the beginning of the 80s. And their gimmick was that they all had unique license plates. They also had these big rear bumpers here on all of the cars. And we can see this one's in a pretty rough condition. None of it's broken, but it's missing a lot of paint and chrome there. And of course all the tampos on it are badly damaged. And they're not something you just go and buy some replacements for. So I'm going to have to make my own. I start out by taking a couple of photographs of the car. Now I'm going to put these into Photoshop. I'll just crop them a little bit. Now I can zoom in and I'm going to basically use the pen and select tools to select the designs. Here I'm just straightening it up a little bit. And I'm just using the pen tool here to get the curves. Now I've got the shape cut out. I'm going to cut out the individual colored parts and then repaint them so here I'm just trying to select a nice area of that dark green color and then I've filled up the dark green stripe and just copied it and flipped it over to get the stripe for the other side. And the same thing again, I'll select the light green stripe. And finally the yellow section. Okay, so there's all of our stripes repainted. Now I'm just going to go through my collection of fonts, try to find a similar one to that three there. Remember, you can always get heaps of free fonts online for projects like this. Okay, so there's our remade 
bonnet decal. And just repeat that process with all the other parts. Now I'm going to take the measurements off of the car and I'll be able to resize the decals. So now I'm just resizing the bonnet. So I take the measurements and resize all the parts and then I've laid them out here on the top of my document. And I'm going to print them out. So these are the print settings I'm using. Plain paper and high quality setting. And I've done them at the top of the document so that I can cut them off and then reuse the decal sheet later. And I just use an Epsom XP440 inkjet printer. So first of all, I'm going to print out my decals on a plain sheet of A4 paper. Then I can cut them out and just test that they're going to fit correctly. For instance, I had to change the bonnet decal a little bit and put a slight curve at the front of it. Once I know that all the decals are going to be the right size, I can print them out. Now, I was using this tester's decal paper. You can get it in white and clear, sort of an odd sized sheet. And it's quite expensive. It's about $20 to $25 New Zealand for five sheets there. And this is the decal paper I've started using. This is from AliExpress. It's from China. You get an A4 sheets. I think it's cheaper for a packet. And there's 20 sheets in there. They're bigger. And it just seems to be much better quality. It takes the ink much better. Half the time the ink just doesn't even print very well on the testers stuff and you end up having to throw away a whole sheet that just cost you, you know, three or five dollars. So here it is, I've printed it out on the decal paper, printed up the top there so I can cut that piece off and use the rest of the decal sheet for more printing later. And this is the testers decal bonder spray. I'm going to give it a good spray of this. Because otherwise, when you go to apply it, it's much more likely that the ink will rub off of the decal. Some people use clear varnish for this, but I find the decal bonder spray works much better. Right, so with the decals drying, I can start taking apart the fast ones BMW. So there were two posts, they're pretty skinny ones. There's the base and the interior. There's another rivet holding the windscreen in, so I'll just have to drill that out carefully. And then I can pop the windscreen out. Oh, there she goes. Now I can use some paint stripper to remove the paint off of the casting. Here it is with the paint stripped off. Give it a clean up with my Dremel wire brush. Get rid of any remaining paint and oxidation. Drill and tap the posts 
It's ended up a little bit rough because I really needed a smaller drill and tap. Hopefully it'll be enough to screw it back together later on with some little button head screws. Okay, so I'm going to hit it with some grey primer. And then I gave it a couple of coats of white. And of course it's easier to paint some white over a gray primer so that you can see where you're going with it all. If you use a white primer, it's a little more tricky. And here it is, all painted white, ready for the decals. Got my decal sheet here, all nice and well cured. That decal bonder spray. And I'm going to carefully cut out the decals with a nice new blade on my craft knife. And then once I've got all my decals cut out, I can apply them onto the car. If you haven't applied water slide decals before, they're pretty easy depending on the size and shape of them. Just wet the surface you're going to apply them to and you soak the decal in some water for 30 seconds or so, maybe a minute. And then it will slide off of the cardboard backing onto whatever you're applying it to and then because the surface is all wet you can move it around get it in just the right place and then I'm going to use my cotton bud here and a rolling action so I can roll out any air bubbles that are in it, make sure that it's all smooth. Just the same technique to apply the other decals. The trickiest ones were the sides as they were quite an odd shape. Often you'll get a bit of the decal which will fold over and stick to itself and you won't be able to straighten it out. Or you'll get some of the ink rub off or you can even sometimes stretch the decal and damage it and so that's why I printed quite a few copies of each design because inevitably you are going to mess some up so this car has got some quite deep lines on the side of it where the body kit is 
And I'm going to use a little bit of this microsole here, which softens the decal plastic and can help it to adhere to the surfaces. But at the same time, I think if you can get away without using this, then don't, because it can also just melt the decal and rub the ink off and make a jolly old mess of things if you're not really careful. So it's best to just apply a tiny amount of it and sort of let the decal do its thing. And if you need to use some more, again, wait till it's sort of well dried. Okay, so I finished that all with a gloss clear and leave it to cure. I can move on to the base here. Just take out these old wheels. Next I'm going to use some hot water and caustic soda to take the chrome off of the base. And here it is with the chrome removed, mostly removed. Now I did manage to drill a hole through the bottom while I was taking it off. So I'm going to have to repair that. Just using a little piece of styrene tube glued it in there and reformed it so hopefully you won't notice that so here's the base after a coat of black primer I think that fix is looking pretty good next I hit it with some chrome using Vallejo metal color chrome And I've detailed those big rear lights with some clear red. Okay, so we're nearly there. It's the interior and the windscreen here. They're both a little bit grubby, so I gave them a wash and some soapy water. And the window's a little scuffed, so I give it a polish with some plastic polish. I think that's looking nice and shiny now. So that just leaves the wheels. Here's the original wheels. I could tidy those up, but I've got these nice aftermarket ones. And they are actually some Dunlops. So I think they're going to go pretty well with it. Okay, so here's all the parts of our Fast 11's BMW refurbished, repainted and ready to go back together. Well, there's one more thing, as I mentioned earlier, these had one-of-a-kind license plates on every car. See with these ones you've got a free belt buckle as well. I couldn't actually find a close-up of any of the license plates. So for my custom license plate, I've just printed out a Fast Ones logo. I've printed it on some A4 paper, cut it out. Then I'm going to use some PVA glue to apply it. A couple of people have asked what this glue is in the comments. It's just normal wood glue, PVA glue for craft and stuff. We used to use it at primary school. So I use a little bit of water to thin it down and then I'm going to use it to stick my license plate on. And it dries completely clear. And that's all the work done. Let's just take a quick look back and be reminded of what we started with. 
Here's our scruffy little fast ones BMW. Missing half its paint and tampos. It's all intact, but it's looking a jolly mess. And here it is after our restoration. It's a custom restoration because I've put new wheels on it and detailed the grill there. But I think it's looking much tidier now. And it's got all that original livery back on it. And I think those new aftermarket Dunlop wheels really set it off. You let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did you used to have some Fast Ones toys when you were growing up? Maybe you even had the belt buckle or there were some cool carry cases for them as well. As always, before I go, I just throw a massive thank you out there to my awesome Patreon supporters who help supporting the channel through Patreon. If you'd like to help out as well, you can check out the link in the description below. And thanks heaps to you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe and check out my channel for heaps more similar content.